Hi everybody, it's Mike Seifert again making another video coming at you from New Michigan Realty. And today's video is about investment properties. Now, I actually uh, had somebody contact me through Bigger Pockets. Uh, it's an investment website that I have a profile on. And um, they came across uh, my YouTube channel, then, you know, called me up and, you know, I'm actually, we're going to be meeting next week, uh, or actually uh, soon here, to discuss some investment uh, properties. So that prompted me to make this video, and I wanted to talk about that today. And so let's get into it. Um, just some advice. Investment properties um, are, can be tricky. Uh, there's only two ways to make money in real estate investment properties. The first way is to flip or turn over a property that's buy it at a certain price, uh, fix it up, and you know have a spread, and then resell it for a profit minus your expenses. So that's the first uh, way of making money. The second is with rental properties. Either you hold property, you hold real estate and rent it out, or you buy real estate and you resell it for a profit. That's the only two ways. Now there's a third way that's called wholesaling. It's almost like flipping where uh, you're basically holding the paper where you lock in a contract and then before it closes you assign that contract to a buyer. And, or another buyer, a friend or an investor, and then they take the responsibility of actually bringing the money to the closing table. So there is technically a third way, but that would be categorized under um, you know, flipping a property. So let's first talk about rental properties. Um, just some lessons with rental properties. Just don't take on too much at once. That's my biggest advice I can say. Um, if you have a bunch of money you're sitting on or you have an investor and you're able to buy 10 or 15 properties at once, just be careful. Uh, that's exactly what I did. I had an investor around 2008. I bought approximately 20 rental properties and 16 of those were purchased within um, less than a year, like within like six, seven months. So what happened was now you're sitting with, or I was sitting with 16, 17 properties. The other three took some time to buy, but... Uh, whatever the number was, it was like 16 or 17 houses all in different cities. And come to find out, some of the cities don't have ordinances where you can just leave a rental pro or leave a property vacant. Some uh, cities such as Centerline, Michigan, they make you fix up the property all at once or they'll give you a ticket. So just be prepared. Um, when you buy a house and you're going to rent it, let's say, make sure you have capital. I can't stress this enough. Don't buy a rental property without having access to enough capital to at least get the city certifications up to date. So what that is is that you're going to call the city out when you buy a property or even before. Some cities make you purchase a bond. Um, you're going to have to go out there and get a CFO list. It's a Certificate of Occupancy Violation List. And some inspector is going to come out. Hopefully you get along with him because if you don't, they're going to make your life even you know harder. Um, they're going to bring back a list of um, violations on the property that you're going to have to fix. So you want to make sure that you have enough money set aside and budgeted for that property based on the repairs. Um, second, again, you don't want to take on too much. I already mentioned that. Um, flipping properties. Let's, let's go to that subject for a minute. Uh, flipping a house, you want to try to get a house done within, you know, uh, sold within you know, four to six months. Um, if you're past six months on a flip house, you're doing something wrong. It should not be anywhere past six months. So the biggest mistake that people do when flipping a house is they pay too much for the house. They don't do the correct evaluation on the property. Um, they go by what they think the property is going to be worth, and they bump it up. Well, when you're doing an evaluation and you're looking at comparables, Comparables aren't always the ultimate method of comparing the value, but it's what the bank goes by. So those comparables, you have to be very, very conservative. You can't go with something that seems like it's on the high end and say, oh, I'm going to get this $150,000 when most comparables are at like one twenty. dollars You have to go with the low end. Then you have to buy in at the right price. And so, you know, most of the time you're going to have to have cash for this stuff. Um, all these creative gurus out there, oh, we're going to, you can get seller financing, this and that. If you're dealing with a bank, they want to see cash money. And if you're going to be in this game competing against other investors, all of them have cash. So if you're going to mortgage something, or you're going to pay cash, or you're not going to pay cash, and you're trying to mortgage it, it's going to be challenging. Uh, the cash offer is always better in the end. 
um, than you know a mortgaged offer. So that's a couple things. Now, the funny thing is, which it just kills me, when people say they're going to flip a house, the next thing they talk about is, I'm going to get my contractor out there to take a look at it. Guys, when you're an investor, you are the contractor. That's what I, I, I laugh. Now, I'm not, this isn't the case for everybody. Some of the bigger, huge investors out there, maybe they have people specifically fixing up houses. But if you're buying $200,000, $150,000 homes, you have maybe three, four hundred thousand 400000 to work with, um, you are the general contractor. So on my first flip, which I did in 2010, and I uh, have another video for of that, um, this was in a st city called Sterling Heights, Michigan. And I didn't have a contractor. I was the contractor. I was the general contractor. And I didn't do all the work, but I coordinated all the work, and I was on-site supervising. You have to be there pretty much at least once a day to supervise what's going on. Half these crews, they don't show up and they don't tell you. Um, some of them come late. You have to get good contractors. That's another thing. You have to find guys that are reliable, which is very, very difficult to find reliable people these days. So that's some advice on flipping. So just watch out for that. Don't overpay for a property you're flipping. Make sure you don't you don't underestimate the repairs. You don't want to uh, get deep into a property and find out that it's going to cost fifty thousand to repair instead of thirty. There goes your profit. And uh, just calculate all the fees up front. You're going to have to pay real estate commissions if you want to sell it properly. So you want to budget for at least 3% to offer 3% out to another agent. If you're a realtor yourself, then, yeah, you only have to worry about 3%. If you hire a realtor, then you got to budget 6%. Even if you sell it on your own, that's a bonus. But you want to factor in all those numbers. There's a great video uh, by the guy that in, uh, started BiggerPockets.com. Again, I had to find the link. I should have posted it in this video, but I don't have it right now. Um, he has an excellent uh, video on valuation of how to value a rental property, how to uh, budget for that. So I would highly recommend checking that out. Um, so anyways, that's you know basically just a quick video on some advice on what to do and you know how to be careful between with rental properties versus flips. And... Um, I'll probably post another video on this topic because it is becoming more and more uh, interesting. Um, and, you know, next time we'll talk about how are we finding these deals, uh, what's out there right now. And in my opinion, currently the inventory is still low. It's very hard to find uh, a good investment property right now. They're out there. You have to dig deep. And there's several, several strategies uh, when it comes to trying to find one of these houses besides the MLS. Fortunately, I'm a broker, so I have, uh, I have a little bit of an upper hand with the MLS, and I can I have a lot of different resources that I can search through. We work with a drug title company, so I can get information on a house quickly and for liens, things of that nature that maybe the average investor can't. So if you are an investor and you're looking for a good realtor, give me a call. I'll try to help you out. Can't guarantee anything, but there are, uh, there are some opportunities still out there. And with interest rates climbing and inventories are starting to pick up now, Unfortunately, people are going to have problems with their mortgage if interest rates go higher. There are going to be defaults coming up in the next year if we keep seeing what we're seeing. So, okay, well, thank you for your time for watching this video. I hope it helped in some way. If you have any questions or concerns, just email me or make a comment below. And uh, have a great weekend and take care. Thank you.